Hey everyone, my name is Janaid, and in today's video, I'm going to take you through everything I carry with me on a daily basis as a data analyst working in London. In this video, I'm going to focus on the things I carry with me when I'm going back and forth from work. I'm not going to include all the tech I have if I'm going away for the weekend or on a trip. That list is a little longer. So starting off with the backpack. The backpack I have is this one here in black and blue. It's by a company called Hot Tuna. And the main reason I have it and I've used it for so long is because it's expandable. So if I unclip here at the bottom, as you can tell, right now it's empty, but as you can tell, it expands to become a pretty hefty weekend bag, which is great. So what I've actually done is stitched two extra clips onto the bottom so that it gives it a slightly sleeker profile when I'm wearing it with a suit. And this backpack is great. It's, it's got so many different compartments for all of my things and being expandable, it's more versatile than some of the other backpacks I've had. The only issue with this backpack is that it doesn't have anywhere dedicated that I can store camera gear or equipment. So I have to be careful when I'm transporting my cameras and lenses back and forth. I do also have a slightly smarter gray check hold all, but I tend not to use that as much because it doesn't have a dedicated padded laptop compartment. When I started working as an analyst in London, I thought I'd have to upgrade my backpack and buy a really expensive one. But what I found was that most analysts and managers in financial institutions just tend to bring a gym bag with them with all their gym clothes in it so they can go to the country club, the gym or the golf course after their work day. All right, let's get into the bag. Starting off with the laptop compartment. The bag has a really nice padded laptop compartment. So usually I'd have my work laptop with me, obviously going back and forth from work, but that isn't as interesting. So for the purposes of this video, I'm going to substitute in my personal daily driver. Now, I've had a few questions about the laptop I use and this is the HP Spectre X360 13 inch. It comes in quite a nice leather folio case. I upgraded to this not long ago from the HP Envy X360 15 inch. This is a 13 inch. The 15 inch became a little too bulky to carry and the speed wasn't quite what I wanted it to be. This is much faster and much more portable. I did consider the M2 Max MacBook Pro, but not only is it way more expensive, but I also use a fair few financial applications which aren't optimized for macOS because no one in finance uses macOS. So I ended up going with this one. The config I have is 16 gigs of RAM, a 512 gig SSD, and the i7 11th gen processor, which breezes through any daily tasks I throw at it. And the Intel Iris Xe graphics, integrated graphics, let me do some light video editing in DaVinci Resolve if I need to edit anything on the fly. So the laptop is touchscreen. It has a 360 degree hinge, which lets me put it into tablet mode for taking notes in OneNote. The touchscreen definitely isn't necessary, but it is a nice to have. One thing I'm getting used to is having no ports. Well, not no ports, but very few. This machine has one USB type A and two Thunderbolt 4 ports. So for everything under the sun, I have to use an adapter. My previous laptop had a full-size HDMI, three USB type A ports and a USB C port. So I'm still getting used to not having all of those ports, but it is a trade-off in terms of size and portability. So that's fine. The worst thing about this laptop, and I don't want to turn this into a laptop review video. I'll do those down the line. But the worst thing about the laptop is that the keyboard definitely could be better. The keys are stiff. Sometimes it'll completely miss a key click and the space bar only works properly right in the middle. I think these issues are just with this device in particular because I tried this in store and from what I remember, everything was perfectly fine. But from a quality control perspective, a flagship machine should be more consistent. Moving on to the electronics within the same pouch for the laptop, I keep the Kindle Paperwhite 2022. This was personally a good purchase for me because when I'm reading in the London Underground, being able to read with one hand is very important. I've actually made a short video about whether this is worth it. I'll link the video up there and in the description below. One thing about the folio case, it also has a place for the HP Tilt Pen, which is what I use when I'm taking notes on OneNote. All right, in this outer pocket, I have four different cables to charge all of my devices. These two black ones are USB type A to type C. This is a USB C to USB C. And finally, the USB A to Lightning because iPhone. If I'm going away for a few days, I'll also have my Anchor power bank with me, but that's not an everyday carry for work. So I'll put that in another video. 
The headphones of choice are the Samsung Galaxy Buds Pro. I have these with me anytime I travel. They sound fine, noise cancellation is great, and these are always with me whenever I'm away from home. The battery case gives plenty of battery, although mine are a couple of years old, and the case battery definitely isn't as good as it once was, but they do charge wirelessly, so it's not entirely inconvenient to keep them fully charged. I haven't switched over to AirPods because honestly, I've had no efficiency or pairing issues with any of my iOS devices, my iPhone or iPad, so I've had no reason to upgrade and these do the job just fine. This is the Apple Watch Series 6 and the main reason I got it is to make it easier to pay for things and its main function is now to let me tap in and out of the London Underground. The always on display is nice and battery life lasts up to two days with very light use. And again, I haven't felt the need to upgrade to whatever series is newest. I think the series eight is out now. This does everything I wanted to just fine. All right, next thing in the laptop compartment this is a one liter insulated water bottle this has really encouraged me to stay hydrated because it keeps water cold for up to 48 hours and it does a really good job of keeping water cold this is a japanese notebook i think it's the same as craft notebooks that's craft with a k it's slightly smaller than a6 so it fits into a suit pocket perfectly if i want to take notes in a meeting without my laptop Another Japanese product I have with me is a ballpoint pen. The tip is very thin, so these are very nice to annotate and write with, but they are very expensive, so these are definitely a luxury. In the middle compartment, American crew fiber to fix my hair on the fly. Body spray in case I happen to have a dinner appointment or event to attend after work. And finally, a travel size Vaseline. In fact, I'm proud to announce that this video is sponsored by Va it's not sponsored by Vaseline. This video is not sponsored by Vaseline. And this is not lipstick. This is an atomizer. Essentially what it does is allow you to have a small amount of your perfume in this spray bottle. So I can take this wherever I go and I'm not carrying around a 200 ml bottle of perfume. It falls under Heathrow's travel guidelines for liquid and easily lasts a couple of weeks with regular use. Shout out to Anas for putting me onto this. This I have with me all the time. Last thing in the middle section is my folding umbrella. Obviously this is more of a summer thing than a winter thing, but this generally stays at the bottom of my bag because I live in London and the weather. This is by far the best folding umbrella I've ever had. It's by a company called Fulton. It's automatic, so it opens and closes with the push of a button. The ribs are reinforced and it has storm technology, so this thing never ever inverts, no matter how high speed the wind you're in. This thing is rock solid and I have to keep it away from my family because they always try and steal it from me. Also in my bag, this is a Bloomberg B unit. This is what allows you to log in to the Bloomberg terminal at work. Bloomberg do have an app that I can use instead of this for authentication, but the app is very finicky and sometimes it doesn't work. So I have this with me at all times. This is where my fingerprint goes. It shows a code that I have to scan into the terminal. So I have this with me as well. So, okay, that's everything in the bag. Moving on to what I carry in my pockets. So this is the sum total of everything I carry with me in my pockets. As you can tell, it's not very much. Starting off with the wallet. This is my wallet of choice. This was a birthday present from a family member a long, long, long time ago. It's made of maroon and red leather, and it's the perfect size for all the cards that I carry. And if the Bcam can focus on that, it has my initials stamped into the corner. This is really durable. I've had it for so long and it's never let me down. Now this is my key card to get into work. I'm 90% certain I can't show this on camera, so I'm gonna leave this upside down, but this is what lets me get past security all the time. Onto my daily driver. My daily driver is the iPhone 11 Pro Max. I've had this for about two and a half years now and I haven't felt the need to upgrade yet. The main thing I use it for is photos and videos and 4K from all three of these cameras is perfectly fine with some color grading and tweaking. I even intersperse some 4K footage from the iPhone into my YouTube videos. So it's still doing the job just fine. It still has over 90% of its original battery health. The screen is great, performance hasn't slowed down much at all, and I can easily get six to seven hours of screen on time. So I haven't felt the need to upgrade this either. My wallpaper, if the B camp focuses on that, my wallpaper is a shot of Michael Jordan going up for a dunk in the 1997 NBA Finals against the Utah Jazz. That's the series that Karl Malone had gotten MVP and that's what 
Jordan used as fuel to go and win that series. So that's everything I carry with me back and forth from work. As you can tell, I don't carry much. There's no books, no clutter, no excess. I just carry everything that I'd need on a daily basis. I'll leave links to all of the things I've mentioned down in the description below. I'm planning on making another video about the tech I carry with me on trips, which is much longer. There's cameras, lenses, and other things which might be interesting. So leave a comment down below if you think that would be of interest to you. Follow my Instagram if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.